Chemistry lecture number 49, Dissociation of Ionic Compounds. How do ionic compounds break apart when they dissolve in water? For example, predict the ions that are formed when K3PO4 is dissolved in water and write the balanced equation showing the dissociation of K3PO4 into ions. Now we'll follow the following two guidelines in writing dissociation equations. Uh, we'll write the ions and their charges. If possible, find the charge from the uh, periodic chart or the solubility chart. Uh, from the previous lecture, lecture number 48, I gave you a solubility chart that lists uh, the polyatomic ions. And the periodic chart is an aid to uh, you use for figuring out the charge on uh, ions based on what group they're on. Um, a formula for polyatomic ions, though, and their charges should be memorized. So by now, you should have the common polyatomic ions memorized. If there's a subscript below the atom, put it in front of the ion. Do not move the subscript if the ion atom is part of a polyatomic ion. And for polyatomic ions, uh, you move the subscript that's outside the parentheses of the ion. Now I'll show you an example to illustrate what all these words mean. These words probably don't mean much to you unless you actually see it uh, explained, but we will do that. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, do K3PO4. So. PO4, you should recognize that as phosphate, a polyatomic ion. So you should have memorized that PO4 has a negative 3 charge. All right. K, that's the other ion. Potassium K is in group 1, and group 1A elements have a plus 1 charge. So we put a plus right there. Now you see this subscript right here? You swing it in front. So this becomes 3K. All right, and basically that's your answer. We can write AQ next to it to indicate that they are uh, dissolved in water. And notice that I did not move the four in front. Well, I didn't move the four in front. It's because this four is part of a polyatomic ion. So you only swing the number in front if it's just an atom by itself. And if you have more than one polyatomic ion, uh, we will show you how to do that. All right, so let's go through some examples and uh, show how they dissociate. Silver nitrate, okay, well, NO3, that's a polyatomic ion you should memorize. You should have that memorized by now. Nitrate has a negative one charge, all right. Ag is silver. <clears throat> now remember in ionic compounds, the total charge has to be zero. So if this has a negative one charge, this has to be a plus one charge. Also, silver is one of those transition elements whose uh, oxidation state you should have memorized. It doesn't have a variable oxidation state. I think it's silver is plus one. You should also have zinc memorized. That's plus two. Nickel is also plus two. So that's the answer to that. Okay. So that is how silver nitrate dissociates. And notice that it doesn't say H2O above. Well, that's because it's not always necessary to write H2O above the arrow. Sometimes we do it and sometimes we don't. All right, here we go. <coughs> CH3COO, you should recognize that as a polyatomic ion. That's acetate. CH3COO, you should have memorized it as a negative one charge. All right. NA, that's a group one element, so it'll have a plus one charge. And we're done. That's the answer. All right, and I'll write AQ next to it to indicate that dissolved in water. Okay, let's try another one. <clears throat> NH4Cl. You should recognize NH4 as ammonium. And you should have memorized that NH4 has a plus charge. And all these polyatomics I'm referring to, they're on that list of, uh, it's on the solubility rules list from uh, lecture 48, so you can look on that list if you uh, can't remember them. All right, Cl. Cl is a group 7A element or a group 17 element. In any case, the oxidation number of the halogens is negative 1. All right, and there's your answer, NH4Cl, AQ. <clears throat> NH4O8, how does that dissociate when you put it in water? Well, once again, NH4 is a polyatomic that you should have memorized by now. OH is another polyatomic. You should have memorized that hydroxide, OH, has a negative one charge. And that's the answer. K, 
K2SO4, okay? SO4 is sulfate, and sulfate has a negative two charge. Right. Potassium is K. It's in group one on the periodic chart, so it's gonna have a plus one charge. And this two, we swing it in front. And there's our answer. So, dissociates like that. All right, let's try another one. CS2, CO3, almost solved the same way. CO3 is carbonate. So carbonate is CO3 and carbonate has a negative two charge. Right. CS, cesium. Cesium is a group 1A element, so it's gonna have a plus one charge. Two cesium, swing the two in front. And there you go. That's how it dissociates when you put it into water. Calcium bromide. All right, Ca, that's a group two element or a group two A element. So group two A elements have an oxidation state of plus two. Bromine, Br, it's a halogen, group 7A or group 17. Those have a negative one charge. Two bromine, so we swing the two in front of the, two, in front of the uh, Br. And essentially that's it. So that is how calcium bromide dissolves in water. <clears throat> Silver nitrate, okay. So Al is aluminum. Aluminum is in group 3A on the periodic chart. And that particular column, those elements have a plus three oxidation state. And then NO3 is nitrate. And nitrate has a negative one charge. And notice that nitrate is in parentheses and outside the parentheses is a three. So it's telling you that there are three nitrates attached to one aluminum. So you take this three. Remember we treat polyatomic ions as though they were a single element. So we take this three and we swing it in front of the NO3. So we put a three in front there. So this three is this three, right? This three, we swing it in front of the NO3 and we're done. All right, these are a little bit trickier. Copper sulfate, well, let's do the sulfate first. SO4 with a negative two charge. And then we have Cu, copper. Now copper is a transition element and it has variable oxidation states. So copper is right there. See, it doesn't fall into 1A, 2A, 3A through uh, 8A. Copper's right here. So what's the oxidation state of copper? Could be uh, plus one or it could be plus two. Well, the way you figure it out is if sulfate has a negative two charge, copper has to have a plus two charge. Okay, in ionic compounds, the total charge is zero. So that's how you figure out the charge if it's a transition element. You see what it's attached, what it's attached to. All right, so this is almost the same thing. Chromium bromide. So Cr, chromium is also a transition element. Yeah, it's right here. And I think chromium has oxidation states of uh, two and three, I believe. I'd have to look it up, I'm not sure. But it has variable oxidation states. We don't know what it is. Bromine, so that's Br. Now bromine is in group 7A on the periodic chart. It's a halogen, so it has a negative one charge. This two, we swing in front of the Br. Okay, so what's the charge in chromium? Well, I have two negative one charges, so the total amount of negative charge is negative two, so that means the chromium has to have a plus two charge to balance the negative two charge. Positive two and negative two equals zero. So that is how that falls apart. 
iron acetate, so C2H3O2. This is another way of writing the acetate ion. Um, I think I'm going to need some room, so I'm going to write the answer down here. Um, Fe, don't know yet. It's a transition element right there. Iron, I think, can have plus two and plus three oxidation states, so we don't know what it is quite yet. Okay, C2H3O2, C2H3O2. Okay, you should have memorized that acetate has a negative one oxidation number. There are two acetates attached to one iron. So this two right here, we swing in front of the C2H3O2. All right, so this two right here, swing in front, becomes that two. All right, so what's the charge on the iron right here? Well, two negative one charges, so the total amount of negative charge is negative two. That means the iron has to be positive two to balance the negative two charge. So that's our answer. Okay, one more. <clears throat> Titanium sulfate. Hmm. Let's see. How do we figure this one out? Well, I'm going to write Ti right here. Titanium is also a transition element. Yeah, here it is right here. So I think it has oxidation states of, well, I'm not sure. It's variable. I'm no, I know that for sure. Plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. Who knows? But... I do know the oxidation state of the sulfate. Sulfate is SO4, and it has a negative 2 charge. All right. <clears throat> there are three sulfates. So this 3, we swing in front of the sulfate. So we'll put a 3 right there. So this 3 is that 3 right here. Um, now we can, uh, oh, we can do something else. For the titanium, see the 2 right here? We'll swing it in front. All right, so this 2 goes there. Okay, so this two is that two swung in front. Alright, so now we can do a little bit of math. Total amount of negative charge is three times negative two. It's negative six. So the total amount of negative charge in this compound is negative six. Three times negative two. So the total amount of positive charge here has to be positive six. Two times positive three gives me positive six. So that's the charge on the titanium. So it's gonna be two Ti3 plus plus three SO4, negative two. Three times uh, positive three is positive six, and the total charge is zero. So that's our answer. That's how you figure out what the charge is on the uh, titanium. So I'll put AQ right there, and an AQ right there. All right. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been chemistry lecture number 49, Dissociation of Ionic Compounds.